Today on Inside the Issues, I speak with David DeWitt on international law and governance. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Inside the Issues, the CG online podcast. I'm David Welch, CG Chair of uh, Global Security at the Walsley School of International Affairs and Professor of Political Science at the University of Waterloo and Senior Fellow here at CG. Every week we're pleased to welcome a guest into the studios here at the Center for International Governance Innovation to talk about some timely and important item on the global agenda. And today I'm happy to welcome David DeWitt. Welcome David DeWitt back Thank you. to the program. Uh, David is the Vice uh, President uh, for Programs here at uh, CG. And uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different, which is to talk more about CG and CG's programs, but uh, with reference specifically to international legal issues and uh, related items that are on CG's right. research agenda. And the occasion is the recent announcement, very exciting announcement, of the establishment of CG's new international law research program. Uh, congratulations on that. Thank you. Uh, I've had a lot of people contacting me about this and asking me questions about it, so I'm sure yeah. there are many who would like to know a little bit more about it. So let's start there, talk about the new uh, international law research program, and uh, then we can branch out to talk about some other issues. Sure, happy to. Well, um, this is a wonderful opportunity, not just for CG, but we really see it as uh, an opportunity for Ontario, the rest of Canada, and hopefully as we uh, develop and mature in this program, It'll be a resource that will be attractive to colleagues and interested parties from around the world. It's uh, unique because it is a freestanding uh, program housed within CG that's dedicated to research in uh, initially in three principal areas of international law. And um, it affords us the opportunity to attract experts from uh, law schools, from the practice of law in the private sector, and from uh, the application and practice of law in governments and international organizations. So the intent is to uh, turn uh, this program into a resource to bring people here, um, many of them full-time, some part-time, for extended periods. We'll bring real expertise. Uh, we also, through this program, are very fortunate to have the resources to provide up to 20 scholarships for graduate students on an annual basis. And again, these students will be able to come for shorter or longer periods of time, depending on what their needs are and what their programs allow. Uh, this is not a degree granting program, but we'll work in harmony and in consultation and cooperation with universities, initially in Ontario. Uh, later elsewhere in Canada and our intent is to be available to the international community. And we're doing it this way because the program is funded through the, uh, the largesse, the contribution of both um, the, the founder of CG, Jim Balsilli, and a matching contribution from the Ontario government. And really it is um, linked with uh, the integral notion that international law, the rules, the procedures, the norms that those rules and procedures um, emulate, um, enhance the opportunities to undertake economic growth, uh, improvement in quality of life, uh, pursuing the interests of citizens and their governments, uh, and that we need that expertise here in Ontario to, to drive change and in the rest of Canada. And the advice we've received in the work leading up to creating this program was that uh, as Canada's economy expands, as our population grows, as we face the challenges and opportunities of globalization, these areas of international law are increasingly important, yet Canada does not have sufficient capacity uh, to meet these demands. Mm. Uh, and we'd like to be able to contribute to enhancing Canadian capacity. And you mentioned that there are, uh, will initially be three areas in particular. Yes. Uh, the three principal areas, areas are inter international intellectual property law, uh, international <coughs> environmental uh, uh, law, and international law dealing with trade, business, economic investment. And CG has a number of other programs uh, running that sort of touch on these various issues. Um, 
global economy program, the global security program. Do you imagine uh, this freestanding program synergizing with those as well? Absolutely. Uh, just as the global economy program and the global security program and our work on development interact, and indeed our work on Africa, um, which has also been part of CG's place, interacts with these other streams, so the international law program will be a program within CG, and there will be interactions and synergies across these different streams. We're already seeing that now. Um, we have launched, uh, about a year ago, we launched a research program on internet governance that has uh, attracted a great deal of att attention. And a major aspect of that has to do with inter in international law, mm -hmm. both um, intellectual property, but also issues of enforcement, cybersecurity, uh, the global economy of the internet, and all the demands that that makes of the international legal community. And so we're seeing that as just one example of uh, the interactions between these different streams. I think what is, what is special, perhaps, about the opportunity uh, with law is that uh, we're doing this outside the, the sponsorship of a law school. Uh, we're recognizing that law enters into the lives of people in many different ways, both public and private, that Canada, uh, located in the international trading world, financial sector, the politics and economics of globalization, requires law. Uh, and so we're hoping that uh, as a freestanding program within CG, this will attract participation by law schools, by faculty from other parts of universities that might recognize law as an essential part of their own work. I could imagine a faculty member, for instance, who teaches in a faculty of environmental studies, who's increasingly focusing on treaties and regulations that deal with water quality or invasive species, recognizing that uh, the creation, the management, the regulation afforded by treaties and the challenges of enforcement the, the clash between international interests and national sovereignty rights all address the concern of someone who's a scholar in environmental studies. But this person is unlikely to have gained that experience and that knowledge um, from their own graduate uh, pr preparation, their own research. This might afford them an opportunity to do just that, or their PhD students. Um, one could imagine uh, a student or a faculty member doing graduate work at uh, a business school without necessarily a law background. But clearly, whether it's in uh, economic regulations, on international tax law, on intellectual property uh, issues, uh, having to do with uh, high technology, research and development, the, the, the opportunities of law, the requirements of law, increasingly penetrate into almost every sector. To par paraphrase, what was said for a different issue, perhaps it's too important to be left just to lawyers. <laughs> Very good. We'll be back again in a minute with David DeWitt. You're watching or listening to Inside the Issues, a CG Online podcast. Look for us at cgonline.org, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube. Welcome back. So with the, the new program is the idea that people will uh, come with their own projects and propose their own projects to work on or will there be projects here to which they can apply uh, and right. work in groups or some combination of those things? That's a very important uh, question. I'm glad you raised it because um, I think it's a mixture. Now we'll learn over the initial couple of years of this program, but our expectation is that the people who will be attracted, who would like to be able to take the time and use our resources to be able to participate in this. They will be attracted to it because of the opportunities to explore important issues that are of critical interest to them. And I would expect that more often than not, those will resonate with us because our documentation that's on the website uh, will, will make it clear to anyone who takes some time to look at it, the range of interests we are initially concerned with. And they're, they're set forth in pretty broad and general terms. Governance, regulation, 
effectiveness, efficiency, appropriateness, questions around innovation. Uh, so it's going to really be up to those experts to come with interesting and exciting ideas that they want to explore and in a sense sell those to us. At the same time we have our own ideas and our own projects that are evolving. And the one I spoke of earlier, Internet Governance, mm -hmm. is a good example. It offers an enormous array of opportunity. So I expect that many of our projects will themselves be the kinds of things that draw people to consider spending six months or two years uh, working with us from their perspective of law or their perspective engaging international law. Uh, so I would not presume that uh, it would be appropriate for a think tank to rule anything out from the start, but to really be a place that contested ideas can be explored, that challenges can be engaged. Um, and we're looking at this as, as a vehicle to provide individuals with a chance to do first-rate research that is explicitly policy relevant. So we recognize that as an academic discipline, legal scholarship is terribly important as a foundation. CG's role in this is not directly to enhance the core aspects of legal scholarship. It is to take the best legal knowledge that's available, push it to the boundaries, explore new areas, and keep asking the question, how does this apply to, or how will this impact the practice, whether it's the practice of engaging in treaty making, or establishing a new precedent, or uh, fulfilling a legal obligation, uh, or creating new legal regimes that may be required in areas that we have not yet, yet foreseen. Uh, so I think we're going to have a healthy mix of what we might call curiosity and response to things that we're all, all, already doing. Mm -hmm. And we have to be prepared to engage those who, who come to us to see how it works. I guess my last comment on this, David, would be that as a think tank, unlike a university, we, uh, one of our differences is that we are interested in public policy impact. So we are interested in helping shape um, our research agenda. And there are lots of things that people will come that we will say no to, not because they're not worthy, but because they don't fit our needs. Mm -hmm. And we can only do so much with the resources we have. And so right now we've, we have these three pillars, but they're likely to unpack in interesting ways. So for instance, um, on the area that deals with um, uh, business and trade and finance and regulation, well, tax is not in that, in that title. But I don't think you can go very far unless you deal with the challenges around international tax arrangements, treaties, regulations. Uh, so it's likely that somewhere along the line, someone with an expertise in international tax is going to come, mm -hmm. come to us. At least I hope so. And I expect eventually it'll be in labor law, it may be in, in employment standards because, again, of business differences. It could be in terms of questions of um, the different national standards of the right of the public sector to intervene in areas of public-private partnership. Um, sustainability I issues, if there's a, a major development that has economic, that has environmental impact. And it could be transboundary. These are all things that I think uh, will need to be explored. So I expect a healthy conversation will occur between CG and experts in the field who both are at law schools and are, who are in practice and who are in government and international organizations. And if we do our job well, within, let's say, three years of launching, we should have a good representation from all those sectors on our senior research staff our fellows um, who are providing that opportunity. Very good. We'll be back again in a minute with David DeWitt. If you're watching or listening to Inside the Issues, the CG Online podcast, look for us at cgonline.org, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube. I'm sorry to ask you technical questions about mechanics and eligibility, but I'm sure a lot of the viewers will have those on their mind anyway. So, 
Uh, imagine a group of people wanted to apply together as a, as a block in effect. Uh, would you be open to that? And would there be any sort of um, terms and conditions and constraints? For example, would only people from Ontario initially be eligible to apply as a group or if there were some critical mass from Ontario but right. one or two collaborators say from the United States or somewhere else? I think we will definitely be open to the kind of um, possibilities you're envisioning by your, your question. How quickly, how soon? I'm, I'm not certain. I would think that if in within six to eight months we've addressed um, a core mandate to create opportunity for Ontario expertise, uh, then I think we will be eager to open up the door. And in creating that opportunity for Ontario expertise, if they have, if an individual has a project that draws on expertise from colleagues in different parts of the world, not just in different parts of Canada, I think that would be open for conversation because that's in the long-term interest of all of us. So I don't think we're going to be rigid on this. I think we're going to uh, address each proposal on its merits. We'll have conversations with the, the individuals who are interested. Uh, we'll see where this might go. Uh, it may well be that some things are the perfect opportunity for a startup that we will be in the first year, 18 months. And others may be more appropriate to say, you know, in about 18 months or two years, we'll be well placed because we'll have a core group and then you will fit in and bring value added to that core group. But it's too early to do this now. I think those are the kinds of things that we're going to be, be learning as we go. Uh, and hopefully um, between those who advise us and the people who contact us who are genuinely interested, the conversations will be healthy and very positive and open-ended. Mm. Um, we're looking at this entire package as a long-term opportunity. We have resources for at least 10 years. Very good. And so uh, we can afford to take our time, but on the other hand, we don't want to waste time. That's right. Now, you mentioned students, so I imagine students are, are quite important uh, Yes. To this, You're, are you speaking of doctoral students doing we're, academic programs uh, in law and cognate right. social sciences? We've talked about graduate students. Um, in the early conceptualization of this program, it was principally, perhaps even entirely, law, and it was presumed it would be LLM or PhD students in law. As uh, many might know, but not everyone will realize. You can pursue an LLM or a PhD in law without an undergraduate law degree. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a lawyer. And there are people on faculty at law schools who don't have undergraduate law degrees and don't practice law but are legal scholars. Right. Um, and just as I was uh, referring earlier to opportunities for faculty for dis to come who do not come out of the disciplines in law but see advantage to learning law or may already have some law expertise that they want to uh, pursue further. Uh, our interest is attracting exceptionally strong graduate students. Likely the majority of them, at least initially, will come from law faculties. But many of them may come out of business schools, schools of international affairs, graduate departments, departments of political science or economics, um, or one might imagine even in the humanities because of intellectual property uh, mm -hmm. issues and the digital media where there's a lot of interdisciplinarity going on. So a PhD student in English literature but who actually works through the digital media process might have an interest in this because of intellectual property law related to these new forms of uh, communication. Now we're not a degree granting program. We don't give credit. But we do have this unique opportunity of funding graduate students for shorter or longer periods of time. How can we make it attractive? We're really targeting graduate students who, either at this, who are at the stage in their graduate work that they see advantage and can afford in terms of time to take maybe six months or take, take a year away from their normal course of work to do focused research being mentored by a research fellow at CG in the law program 
And in order to make this more attractive, our intent is to work with every university that is interested to arrange a partnership so that a student comes and would be supervised not only by the person at CG, but would be co-supervised by the person in his or her program, whether it's in law or a PhD program in a faculty of graduate studies. And so the work that would be done would be co-organized, co-reviewed, co-assessed by the CG individual and by the faculty member at the home university. And then it's really a relationship between the student and his or her home university. Do they get credit for it? Do they just get it, do they get it acknowledged? Um, we're going to be providing financial assistance that allows the student to take some time out of the normal graduate program. If they wish to get credit for that effort, that's between the student and the university. And we're happy to provide the kinds of uh, credentialing in terms of detailed critique of the paper, proper report, a proper assessment. And our hope is that our research fellows will collaborate and cooperate with the faculty me member so th this is a win-win for everyone. Um, I think this is unique. I don't know of anywhere else in Canada that this opportunity uh, is afforded. And I would expect within a year or two, this kind of opportunity will be available to any graduate student, whether in law or some other graduate faculty at any university in Canada. And depending on how that goes, my hope is it would be available to students outside of Canada. We're already getting uh, expressions of interest from Canadian graduate students abroad. Mm -hmm. I see no reason why um, in time, and hopefully not very long after we've launched all of this, um, our program will be available to, to those students. Again, the evaluation will be done on the merits of the proposal, the ability of CG to have the right person in place to supervise and mentor that student, and the cooperation of that student supervisor and agreement of that student's home program, that this is a worthwhile thing. I'd add one other point. One of the reasons the student might come here rather than remaining um, in the law program or in the PhD program, political science or environmental studies, whatever it may be, um, is because the break they would get when they come here would be an opportunity not only to do one-on-one -on -one mentoring and an intensive research project that would contribute to their graduate degree research, but we have an explicit commitment to do research that is both scholarly sound but policy relevant and applied. And, and that remains unusual within most graduate programs. So we want to ensure that people who come through our, our program uh, do have that sense that what they're working on can make a difference in the public domain. Very good. Be back one last time with David DeWitt. If you're watching or listening to Inside the Issues, the CG Online podcast, look for us at cgonline.org, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube. Welcome back. So I imagine one of the attractions of this program is that people who come into it will be rubbing shoulders with people that they might not otherwise rub shoulders with and, and do so in a fairly intense way. Uh, so th again, this is part of the design, isn't it? That you'll not right. only have academics and, and students, but you'll have practitioners and uh, officials, um, presumably exactly. leave from there. We've already, um, just in the few days since the public announcement, reached out to more than two dozen of Canada's leading law firms that are recognized uh, having experts in their practices that um, cover some of the areas that we're interested in. Uh, we've informed colleagues in provincial governments, in the federal government, and we're reaching out to international organizations. Our hope is that um, within the first, again I say, year to 18 months, uh, we will be housing our program not only with people coming out of the academic communities, but coming out of the active practitioner worlds. So one could imagine Department of Justice, but one could also imagine that there are people dealing with um, some of these major legal 
issues within the Department of Foreign Affairs, within National Defense, within uh, Environment Canada, um, in industry, um, at the provincial level as well, um, in all these sectors, certainly in international institutions. We've already had some uh, inquiries of interest from people in the UN system. I expect it will broaden to other areas and we're in touch with them. So again, if this goes well and if we can help people arrange leaves of absence, for instance, from their current uh, employment where they could come to CG for up to three years, uh, when we have a full complement, it should be a very healthy and exciting mix of people from a number of different uh, professional areas, all having in common expertise in relevant areas of international law. Then mm. will CG be providing publication support for people yes. in the program? We have in our budget um, not only opportunities to provide salaries for research fellows and scholarships for students, but um, to underwrite modest research projects, to assist in going out and securing external f uh, financial support for research projects. And CG has uh, an exceptionally strong public affairs uh, department, um, which handles everything from the kind of thing we're doing here through to print media. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we publish uh, high quality research papers. Uh, we're now into book publishing. Uh, we have policy briefs, we have a blog. All of these uh, vehicles, all of these instruments of communication and dissemination will be available to anyone affiliated with um, this new CG program. We have a peer review process um, so that we can assure ourselves and assure our readership that the materials that we send out are of high quality, are recognized by uh, the community of experts as worthwhile. Um, so I think uh, we're in a very good place, not only to launch the program, but to see it sustained and grow and to be attractive. Now, the uh, reason I get questions about this program is because people often have a difficult time distinguishing CG from the Balsley School, uh, which I was the former director of. Uh, have you had conversations with the current director of the Balsley School about opportunities to synergize the new International Law Research Program with Balsley yes. School activities? I have, and when you were in that position, I had conversations with you in the anticipation of this program. Yeah. And I think there is enthusiasm. Uh, one of the marvelous things that could evolve is that as we build within CG our capacity, it could afford the Balsili School the opportunity to invite some of these fellows to teach a seminar, to give lectures, to perhaps even have adjunct status so they could co-supervise graduate students. One of the marvelous things for the Balsili School, it, would, it could emerge as not only um, one of Canada's premier schools of international affairs, but unique in having a real capacity in a range of areas of international law, which um, a capacity which is sorely lacking in most graduate schools of international affairs, not just in Canada, but in the United States and overseas. So I'm hoping that um, through our very healthy partnership with our two universities here, University of Waterloo and Wilfrid Laurier University, that as this program gets underway, we will find um, a lot of opportunities for cooperation and collaboration to the benefit of all organizations involved. And among the strengths at the Balsley School on the research side is are, are topics such as international migration and uh, international human rights. Those aren't on the immediate list of the three areas that you're interested in concentrating on, but uh, down the road, you could imagine I think these those are all imaginable. Um, I don't think those are the, I mean, I know those aren't the areas we're investing in now, right. but they're imaginable, especially if they emerge organically out of research projects. As I said, you could start off in one that seems more hard edge, uh, and suddenly you're into labor law, and labor gets you into environmental uh, uh, employment standards, and that gets you into human rights. Um, and you find when you speak to people who are really um, exceptionally good in their fields of international law, they, they may practice in what seems to be a relatively narrow area, but their breadth of knowledge is, is even more impressive, and they will therefore know how to make those connections. And that's what we'll be looking for. Well, it's an exciting opportunity, not just for CG, but for 
Canada and, and the world. And um, as you know, I've always been a supporter of this idea, and it's just wonderful to see it coming to fruition. I imagine our viewers who've, who've watched this long uh, probably are seriously interested in finding out more information about the program, and the place to go is uh, www.cgonline.org. Right. And thank you for uh, coming in and helping us understand this exciting venture better. And to our audience, thanks for joining us. And please join us again next week for another episode of Inside the Issues, the CG Online podcast. Look for us at cgonline.org, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube. that are on CG's right. research agenda. And the occasion is the recent announcement, very exciting announcement, of the establishment of CG's new international law research program. Uh, congratulations on that. Thank you. Uh, I've had a lot of people contacting me about this and asking me questions about it, so I'm sure yeah. there are many who would like to know a little bit more about it. So let's start there, talk about the new uh, international law research program, and uh, then we can branch out to talk about some other issues. Sure, happy to. Well. Um, this is a wonderful opportunity, not just for CG, but we really see it as uh, an opportunity for Ontario, the rest of Canada, and hopefully as we uh, develop and mature in this program, it'll be a resource that will be attractive to colleagues and interested parties from around the world. It's uh, unique because it is a freestanding uh, program housed within CG that's dedicated to research in uh, initially in three principal areas of international law and um, it affords us the opportunity to attract experts from uh, law schools, the, the founder of CG, Jim Balsilli, and a matching contribution from the Ontario government. And really it is um, linked with uh, the integral notion that international law, the rules, the procedures, the norms that those rules and procedures um, emulate uh, enhance the opportunities to undertake economic growth, uh, improvement in quality of life, uh, pursuing the interests of citizens and their governments, uh, and that we need that expertise here in Ontario to, to drive change and in the rest of Canada. And the advice we've received in the work leading up to creating this program was that uh, as Canada's economy expands, as our population grows, as we face the challenges and opportunities of globalization, these areas of international law are increasingly important, yet Canada does not have sufficient capacity Today on Inside the Issues, I speak with David DeWitt on international law and governance. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Inside the Issues, the CG online podcast. I'm David Welch, CG Chair of uh, Global Security at the Walsley School of International Affairs and Professor of Political Science at the University of Waterloo and Senior Fellow here at CG. Every week we're pleased to welcome a guest into the studios here at the Center for International Governance Innovation to talk about some timely and important item on the global agenda. And today. I'm happy to welcome David DeWitt. Welcome David DeWitt back Thank you. to the program. Uh, David is the Vice uh, President uh, for Programs here at uh, CG. And uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different, which is to talk more about CG and CG's programs, but uh, with reference specifically to international legal issues and uh, related to the, uh, to meet these demands. Mm. Uh, and we'd like to be able to contribute to enhancing Canadian capacity. And you mentioned that there will initially be three areas in particular. Yes. Uh, the three principal areas, areas are inter international intellectual property law, uh, international environmental uh, uh, law, and international law dealing with trade, business, economic investment. And CG has a number of other programs uh, running that sort of 
touch on these various issues, um, global economy program, global security program. Do you imagine uh, this freestanding program synergizing with those as well? Absolutely. Uh, just as the global economy program and the global security program and our work on development interact, and indeed our work on Africa, um, which has also been part of CG's place, interacts with these other streams. So the international law program will be a program within CG, and there will be interactions and synergies across these different streams. We're already from the practice of law in the private sector and from uh, the application and practice of law in governments and international organizations. So the intent is to uh, turn uh, this program into a resource to bring people here, um, many of them full-time, some part-time, for extended periods. We'll bring real expertise. Uh, we also, through this program, are very fortunate to have the resources to provide up to 20 scholarships for graduate students on an annual basis. And again, these students will be able to come for shorter or longer periods of time, depending on what their needs are and what their programs allow. Uh, this is not a degree granting program, but we'll work in harmony and in consultation and cooperation with universities, initially in Ontario, uh, later elsewhere in Canada, and our intent is to be available to the international community. And we're doing it this way because the program is funded through the, uh, the largesse, the contribution of both um, 